Hello everyone. With the start of a new year, we all want to be productive and achieve our goals. 2024 is going to be my year and in this week's video, I'm going to show you everything I'm doing to prep for the new year, such as vision boarding, planning out my life, and even journaling my feelings in a journal, and so much more. Let's get into this week's video. Journaling can do so much wonders for you and your mental health. As someone who's a full-time college student and first generation, I oftentimes have a lot of stress. And one thing I always preface is please, please, please express your emotions and how you feel. If you can't talk to anybody, then please journal. I've been journaling since the pandemic started, so you know I was going through it in these books. And it's very, very nice to like look back and read like the mindset that you were and how like you behaved and how all your hopes and dreams were at that time period and then coming back and reflecting how you became a different person. So I'm always, always, always adamant about writing down your feelings because it does make a difference and it's not well to hold those feelings inside of you for a long time because one day you can like blow up on somebody or a situation that you don't mean to. So I made two entries for myself, it's just a basic day in my life and basically how I'm feeling and on my second page I wrote a love letter to myself. Oftentimes I feel like it's very taboo to talk about having like low self-esteem or having confidence issues and that's something that I struggle with a lot is self-confidence and I know you're thinking it you're like you look good you have self confidence yes i do have self-confidence and low self-esteem and sometimes i think we need to hear words of affirmation coming from ourselves whether that be in a mirror saying i'm smart i am beautiful or writing it down journal I write three things that I love of myself. I am smart, I am beautiful, I am caring. I draw a little cute stick picture of myself holding myself with heart saying I love me and I write down that you know it's okay to be single and figuring everything out. Many people are in the exact same situation as you are Jesus. I want you to be more kinder to yourself. You work so hard not to be such an angry person in your teenage years. Now that you're an adult you have become more nicer but not nicer to yourself. And having a journal can also be healing to your younger self as I'm writing to my younger self in present tense and saying these things to me. So hopefully that you as well can also be kinder to yourself. Next is organization and planning. One thing about me, I like to think I have a good case of memory. I'm one of those delusional people that like say, oh, I remember it in my head and then don't remember nothing the next day. And that is not a good thing, especially being a full-time college student to have that mindset. <laughs> so for this year, I actually bought a planner. I bought a cute pocket-sized Muji planner and I just wrote exactly the days and the months and sticky notes in my planner because I feel like sometimes we need that structure and although I do have structure of being a college student I don't have structure of like planning because I take my time as someone who's in California we'll go get there when we'll get there but that mindset is not well so here I am just writing my planner and you know wanted to be artsy and cute so, so I color coordinate it and just like school when my day starts my planning my videos my filming my editing days into this planner and hopefully it'll motivate me because I often did try the bullet journal method of writing my plans and thoughts out but it didn't really stick out to me because I was just writing things down like of course I wrote cute things and did that cute spread but like it didn't 
it didn't really help me in the sense of just writing things down. I feel like I had to visualize it first. But if you use a bullet journal for yourself, more power to you and whatever works for you. But I find that having these sticky notes and like sticking them out and moving them is more helpful on me if I need to change up my schedule. Because with bullet journals, of course you can scratch it out and like mark it up. But for me personally, I find the planner to be the best. For this vision board, I often like to make my goals realistic, but also all of these goals are realistic as I am graduating community college or getting my degree, transferring. I put on my vision board getting my license because I still do not have my license. Like, don't look at me. Like, don't be mad at me. I don't have my license. And goals I want to achieve as in terms of career, YouTube, friends, clothing, and hobbies. And I feel like it does work seeing these things in your vision, peripheral vision every day and working hard for those things. Because I feel like with vision boards, you can have these cute wallpapers and stuff, but if you're not actually working hard for it, then you're not reaching your dreams. And I feel like as long as you try and try your best to work for those goals, then like your vision board will come to fruition. And that's something I'm very, very adamant about, about working hard and imagining and visualizing that I can do it. I feel like oftentimes, we often have self-doubt and that is perfectly fine, especially in our societies today where we're often not to dream and overthink and reach for the stars and we're often told to be in this box that we can't be creative, that we can't be fun, smart, reach for our dreams because they're so unattainable. But I feel like dreaming and having that mindset will get you further to your goals as long as you believe in yourself. As long as you believe in yourself, that's all that matters. Sometimes it's discerning when you tell friends and family your dreams and sometimes they won't believe you or laugh at you. And I want you to know that as long as you have that idea, as long as you believe in yourself, that is all that matters. Because sometimes working in silence does wonders for your favor. Not only for yourself, but keeping that goal for yourself there for you. As long as you know that you're talented, that you're smart, that you, anything you reach is attainable and that you can do it as long as you believe in yourself or I believe in you, then you can do it. And that's what I believe in is self-love and uplifting one another and ourselves by telling us words of affirmations in the mirror or writing it down or seeing it in these vision boards that I can do it and you can do it. As someone who's a full-time college student remotely, Sometimes my space is a little crunchy, I won't lie. Sometimes my room is not funky, but messy. And I feel like sometimes for us to have a good mindset or to have a good day, I feel like cleaning your room will do that. Again, cleaning your room will do that. Clean your room, make your bed. Don't yell at me, make your bed. <laughs> <laughs> like clean I know sometimes it's hard but you can do it I feel like when you clean it just feels good the air the atmosphere you're just like okay I got this <laughs> habits. As someone who's been diagnosed with pinched nerves and stomach issues called diverticulosis, I had to do a 180 on my diet, which wasn't, to be honest, the greatest as I have tried these past two years because my stomach issues are about like what food I can digest. So going from like eating red meat, burgers, fast foods, hot foods, 
chips and since some Mexican spicy foods, it was damaging my insides really bad. And I had to be rushed to the ER and that's where I figured out that I had this stomach issue called diverticulosis. Also TMI, also if this is so TMI, I'm sorry. But when I was in the ER, the doctor took a picture of my colon so that I was constipated for a week and told me that I had pouches outside of my colon. And the problem is because I'm eating so bad that my stool can go into those pouches and cause an infection and sepsis and I can die if I keep eating the way I can. And that was a big wake up call for me for my diet since I took so poorly of myself. I want people to know on this health journey that it's not necessarily limiting yourself eating. A big mistake when people have with healthy, they try to cut everything out quick and I want people to know that it's okay to have a bite of a cookie. It's okay to have some chips sometimes. It's okay to have a soda or something sugary or a coffee. But because limiting yourself to those things will only cause danger to yourself and make you want it more. So as someone for me, I eat salad, I eat more fruits, I eat more protein, more granola, more pasta, and stuff like that to help my stomach. It wasn't an easy situation to happen. It wasn't easy to be honest, but I want to be healthy and I want to live long. So I had to cut out all those good foods, greasy foods, spicy foods, red meat, and I feel a lot better. And my face and my skin and my body, personally my insides, I don't have that constant pain in there. And also with my pinched nerve, I have not been doing my physical therapy. If you're my physical therapist, I'm so sorry, I have not been doing it. And not just necessarily working out, but to fix my pinched nerve and stretch and do yoga and eat food seasoned, but still eat food that's healthy for me. And if you're someone who lives in a Mexican household or a first generation household, you know, sometimes it's hard to eat healthy or do those things. But I just want to tell you that you can do it and you can have a conversation with your parents or push through because sometimes it's hard when your parents are eating all these good greasy foods and you're like, well, I can't eat that. Like, so I get what you're there. But honestly, if you're trying and eating healthier, I believe you can do it. Sometimes it's okay to have a slip up and eat your fast food or a cookie or a chip or a soda. There's nothing wrong with that. That is okay as long as you keep continuing to better yourself whether that's working out, going on a jog one day, walking in the morning with your pets, lifting things, getting up, drinking some water, drinking more water. That is all healthy habits. Lastly, I've seen a lot of people talk about lucky girl syndrome, but like, let me do a lucky boy syndrome because as someone who has really bad luck, like, I don't know, sometimes I'd be minding my business and boom, like bad, bad, bad luck. And it's not like I'm attracting it. I just mind my business and like stuff happens. So I want to spread more positivity into my life and say, I can do this. If something happens, that is okay. Something else will happen good in my life. Because oftentimes I feel like for me, I love to complain and I'm a hater. But sometimes when bad things happen to me, I get so angry. I'm like, oh my God, this would happen to me. Like, uh, why do I attract bad things? And one thing I've learned is to like assess the situation and be like, okay, this does seem bad for the moment, but I'm going to accept it and process it. And so this year I'm attracting everything good, positive vibes only. If bad things happen, then that is okay. And sometimes bad things do happen, but that will not stop me from having a good day or a good year or even a good month. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of how to make 2024 the best year of your life. Bye!